All right, it's Thursday, and uh, it's Daryl and Cam at Indie Week doing our weekly music report. Uh, yes, I know. I want to thank everyone who watched last week. It was actually our most watched report ever. So thank you for tuning in and uh, listening to what we have to say every every week. Yeah, I think we had seventeen hundred views or something, something like that. Something like that. It was crazy last week. So that's great. We really appreciate it. So, uh, so what's on the slate for today? What's on the slate for today? Well, last week we alluded uh, we were going somewhere last Thursday night, which ended up being Noble Street Studios, to have a sneak preview of the um, brand new album from the Lazies, Tropical Hazards, which was right. great. Uh, album's coming out on Warner Music Canada uh, in February. The new single is called Nothing But Trouble. Right. And we got to hear the whole thing. Uh, it was great. There was such a great turnout of people as well. Um, obviously, the Warner Music Canada team there was there. There was all sorts of people from radio. Our friends from 94.9 The Rock were there. Lots of industry peeps. Lots of industry peeps. Uh, some bands we know as well. Susie Corey was there. Crownlands was there. Cone from Sum 41. And it's just a great album. I don't know if you've never heard the Lazies before. They're just a great Australian... Yep. Canadian rock and roll band, so... Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and the album was produced by Ian DeSaw from Billy Talent. Right. And uh, we also saw Gavin and Harry Hess. And it was, you know, quite the industry gathering last Wednesday night. A lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the album sounding great. I think it's uh, great to hear guitar rock back. Um, I would say, you know, uh, a bit of ACDC, of course. You can't deny the Australian roots. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Ian definitely has... Uh, added a bit of his flavor to it and it's a real nice blend that I think uh, is going to do well at radio but also uh, the live performance knowing the band is going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, they're great live. One of the most fun bands out there. So, so shouts out to the Lazies. To the Lazies, yes. Yeah. And Crownlands was there who uh, we had had perform in the past. They're friends of ours and they will be playing on Saturday night at the Horseshoe Tavern for the very last show for my friends, The Last Bullet. That's right. Uh, yeah, so uh, Crownlands, uh, there's lots of cool things that those guys are up to. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let them talk about it, but uh, we had some really good chats with them last week, and uh, uh, this is a band that you know really came on strong over the last year and made a lot of noise real quickly. Uh, they did a tour with uh, One Bad Son mm -hmm. last uh, fall. Uh, in fact, we were going to book them for Indie Week, but they ended up doing the tour, which totally made sense. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so like you said, they're going to play this Saturday at the Horseshoe. Um, and also, it is Last Bullet's last show at the Horseshoe, so it should be packed. Oh, I'm sure it will be a Saturday night with those two bands. Can't go wrong. Yep. And then tomorrow night at the Drake Hotel is uh, Ezra Jordan and Emma Lee, who are both uh, alumni from uh, Indie Week as well, who will be playing at the Drake. Yeah, Emma played for us a long time ago, like a long time ago. Yeah. And she has been so consistent and always releases great, great music. And uh, that's going to be a good show. That's on my radar. I'm going to try to make it to that. Yeah, and Ezra just joined us last year for the first time. He's a new artist, and he'll also be on the launch next week, which is a CTV show that's on every Wednesday night, uh, along with Posey, who played at Indie Week last year. So Excellent. We wish both of them luck next Wednesday night and see if their single gets launched. Yeah, <laughs> and I know seeing a few people tuning in. Uh, shouts out to Matt and also uh, Mobius Artist Management, yes. Jennifer. Uh, good supporters of indie music and... Mm -hmm. uh, a new uh, company to one to watch lots of great artists that they're working with and in fact we're probably going to have some announcements with them pretty soon yeah so, because of course our applications are open yeah. at canada.indieweek.com so get your applications in if you want to play indie week next year november 6th to 11th in toronto that's right and i was going to mention a tip uh so we did our early bird applications at uh, like only 10 bucks mm -hmm. uh but there's a with our web host in New York, we weren't able to make some changes, so we decided to leave it open at 10 bucks. So tomorrow we're probably going to be changing it. But uh, so if you haven't applied, do so now, and it's going to be still cheap, like 10 bucks. Excellent. So, so uh, and we had a great response for from artists, like um, artists applying, and uh, there's a lot of positive feedback, uh, which has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to going through the uh, artists that have applied, listening, uh, and we're going to be doing some stuff this year. Uh, 
we're going to be sharing music as we go and uh, you'll be able to hear some of the artists that applied and um, so basically even if you apply we're still so we're still pushing and promoting it yeah so so it'll be good I'm looking forward to listening there's lots there's gonna be yeah there's a lot to listen to this year and we're just getting started so <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely uh, so what else is on our plate yeah I can't rewrite oh I was gonna say <laughs> we're also gonna be back in Manchester this year too ah yes yeah, so uh, that's the other thing too is oh shout out to Alex uh, and Steve uh, Cool people that are watching right now. Um, so, uh, Indie Week UK applications are going to launch uh, basically uh, tomorrow at early bird pricing, ten bucks as well. Um, and the website is uk.indieweek.com. So tomorrow, check it out, and you'll be able to apply there. And, and that's for European and UK bands. That's right. Yeah. Yes. So that's one thing. Indie Week UK. Um, is focused more locally. Uh, there's like this whole Brexit thing happening. So uh, we've decided that this year it's going to be focused mostly on UK and European acts. So, uh, but yeah, that launches tomorrow. Everywhere else in the world, apply to Indie Week Canada. Exactly. <laughs> of course, cool. I'm always reading. Um, my book of the <clears throat> week is Lightfoot by my friend Nicholas Jennings. Nicholas, who, much like last week's uh, book, we had Nicholas on Indie 101 a couple of years ago talking about his book, uh, Before the Gold Rush. Great Canadian writer. If you don't know Gordon Lightfoot, um, if you're a singer-songwriter and you're younger, pick up this book and learn about one of the greatest songwriters of all time and just happens to be Canadian as well and just a really good read and covered by everyone from Elvis to Cher to Bob Dylan. There's lots about Dylan in the book. There's lots about Toronto. There's lots about Canada. Nick is a great writer. Yeah. Um, and the kind of guests that we like to have at Indie 101 as well, who can talk about Canadian music history. So I went out and bought it, Nick, over Christmas. I got a gift card and I found a signed copy as well. So I was really thrilled about <laughs> that. So that was our book of the week this week. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another fine Canadian uh, music person is Denise Donlin. I just wanted to say congratulations to my old boss on receiving the Walt Grealis Award this year. Well, she will be receiving. It was announced today at the Juno Awards in Vancouver. Um, it's a special recognition award for all of her amazing work in the Canadian music industry as an agent at Much Music, running Sony, the work she's done with Word Child, CBC. Uh, she also wrote a book, which was quite interesting, oh, yeah. uh, that my picture's in. <laughs> so congratulations to Denise, and uh, good luck accepting your award at the Junos this year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I saw that announcement this morning. Yeah. Shared it on Twitter, and um, yeah, you know, um, she's done a lot for the industry. Uh, over decades yes <laughs> and uh, you know that's one thing is, is uh, you know when I do the international travel and stuff we realize like the Canada market size you know everybody knows everybody it's a very small world mm -hmm. and uh, really we need to support each other and, and make this a, a strong industry within the market like the global market mm -hmm. you know um, Lots of bands, lots of labels, and all that, but really it's it's sharing of information, sharing of resources, and um, participating, you know, like mm -hmm. being present. I keep saying that kind of stuff. I had a meeting earlier today and had that kind of conversation where it's like, you know, everybody just needs to be present and right. accounted for, like, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, you know, with uh, Toronto Music, really go out and support the bands. We, have, we always talk about listings, like, who's playing this week mm -hmm. and stuff like go check this stuff out uh, go support the band support the venues and that's how uh, we're gonna make it sustainable for yeah. everybody support the bartenders <laughs> yeah everyone's out there trying to make a living from the sound guy to the bartender to the bands so. exactly <laughs> to the venue owner <laughs> uh, so the other thing is uh, we've got uh, so you said next Wednesday is uh, the Drake oh no, no, no launch. the launch yeah, yeah. Fri Friday's the Drake Right, uh, and that's Bell Talk Day. Yeah, let's talk. Uh, Bell mm -hmm. Media is next Wednesday, which is you know something we touched upon at Health and Wellness Day at Indie One Hundred and One last year. <clears throat> uh, it's an important day just to talk about um, health and mental, wellness. Yeah, you know? health and wellness and mental health issues. Yeah, um, and again, we're going to be working on another Health and Wellness Day this year. Mm -hmm. um, we there's been so much that's going on. Uh, I know. Uh, last week we didn't talk about it, but also like you know the cranberries, uh, Dolores, Dolores, yeah, you know, and um, 
I didn't know Dolores, but I also, like, I worked with bands in Limerick, and through that, uh, did some uh, demo sessions with Fergal the drummer, and Noel was one of our judges and panelists, and, you know, uh, it just does show, like, it is a small world, and we got to take care of each other, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I really feel for them. Uh, uh, Limerick is such a small knit community like everybody knows everybody um you know walter Mitty and the realists was another band that came over from ireland played for us and you worked with mm -hmm. and they were you know? produced by for if i'm not mistaken Ex yeah exactly so so yeah next wednesday's <laughs> bell let's talk and uh let let's talk yeah you know so maybe we'll do a, a video that day too why not we'll see um, once again, in conjunction with the Toronto Black Film Festival, RIP, which is Real Indie Film Festival, which is a sister of Indie Week or part of the family, right. um, we are co-presenting a film called Chasing the Blues on February 17th at 7 p.m. at the Carlton Cinema. The festival runs February 14th to the 17th. Uh, great black films from around the world. This one is sort of about a haunted 30s blues record. It's called Chasing the Blues. And Right. John Lovitz is in it. Oh, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw, saw the, a bit of the pre-screening and stuff of it. So, yeah, yeah, so we'll be down there checking that out on uh, February 17th at the Carlton. Right, and I just got to say shout out to Brian Fontes. Uh, Brian, we've mentioned your show already, so rewind <laughs> after the fact. Uh, and Patrick from uh, overseas as well is watching. Davy Sage, uh, shout out to you guys. Um, and then... Uh, some more sort of bad news. Yeah, right, and so. this affected a lot of people over in the, in the UK in Manchester with Marky Smith from The Fall, who you might not know or know their music, but just an absolute, you know, they put 32 records out The Fall, and Marky was the only, wow. only member who was constant through the whole thing. Really? Yeah. Um, he passed away yesterday, but... One of those bands, like you have to do your history as a, as, a, as a young band. You need to know about The Fall and Para Ubu and Velvet Underground and the bands that open doors for bands today. Right. And, you know, go, go on Spotify, go somewhere and listen to Greatest Hits and just learn a little bit about, you know, what came before and what, what your influences, maybe the bands that influenced you were influenced by them. Right. So you need to know a little bit about everything. <laughs> It History. certainly helps, yeah. Right. History is very important. Cool. Um, and I, if I can, I'll just sort of add some extra stuff. Um, so I was just in South America earlier, well, I guess not earlier this year, last year now already, like November, December. Um, and one of the things that has come up in a lot of conversations is about part, that participation and being present and active. You know, I'll, I'll talk to bands like, say they should go to Europe, they should go to certain parts of the States or anything like that. And the first question or first, sorry, comment that they say is, is it worth it? And the thing is, is you don't know unless you go. And it may not be worth it if you take everybody there. It might be worth it to send one band member and kind of like get things situated, start building relationships before trying to take the whole band there. You know, uh, I was one person and I went to South America and man, the relationships that have been built off of that one trip, like I'm in talks with people from Chile, I'm in talks with people from Singapore, different parts of Brazil, just from one single trip. Um, so what I do recommend is find out on the schedule for the next 12 months what festivals with a conference and panels and in industry are happening that are in the markets that you're interested in and see if it's worth it to go. You may look at the price of the pass and you know what? You don't need the pass. The pass helps, but there's usually a hotel associated. There's showcases associated where there's, the fees are much smaller. Um, so if you're stuck on cash, it's still worth it to go and start building relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, and also look at some of the partners involved. There might be discounts. Um, so things like uh, SEMA or Music Ontario, um, they might have some um, correspondence or some uh, partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, this last trip I was on, it was all through SEMA, right? And so um, because of that, I got to be a delegate in pretty much every conference and festival that I, we, we attended. 
I got to speak on panels and do uh, meetings and meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. So that investment really entrenched me in the, the scene right away. Like I got to meet a lot of the right people. So um, yeah, like the, this is the start of the year. This is the time to get your 12 month plan in order, yeah. figure out what you're doing this year and, and get out there. And you sometimes like, volunteer to be a panelist, maybe. Maybe you can bring something to a festival in a different country or a different province saying, I'm a musician from Saskatchewan. Yeah. Can I go to Music Nova Scotia and talk about the scene out there? It's like, well, that's a cool idea. And they're not going to pay for you to go out there nope. necessarily, but your registration might be free and you get to meet other panelists and get to go to all the seminars and things like that. So You just never know. Yeah, try to find right. an angle. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is the relationships you build means that the doors are open more so in the future. <laughs> So uh, don't necessarily think that there's going to be instant results, but think that it's building on what you want to do in the future. So, uh, and then plus two, take an extra couple of days and have a holiday. Yeah. It yeah. also looks good in your application. If your band played or attended another festival and you put it in your application, I look at it or Daryl looks at it. It's like, oh, they went to this festival here or there. They're obviously committed. They, they want to be in the game. So yeah, it looks good. And also like with agents, it, it's like you've traveled. Mm -hmm. You know how to travel. Yeah. Um, you know, you're serious. So um, anyways, that's my two cents this week about trying to give some advice. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just think that there's so much opportunity. There's a festival for every genre. So that means you could be having a hard time locally building an audience, but there's an audience waiting somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's an easier road if you go to them sometimes as opposed to trying to bring them to you. Yeah. And you'll yeah. get out as, as much as you put in. <laughs> yeah. Attend everything. Go to everything and meet everybody yeah. that you can. Um, you know, it's, I, don't, I, I, I see so many artists that just unfortunately don't go to stuff. And I'm a big advocate of, of participating, you know. Like, I, I try my best to go out to stuff, um, uh, especially industry-related now. Mm -hmm. um, and you start seeing the same people yeah. over and over again. And that's how you build a relationship. So... And they're more willing to help you if they see you over and over again. Yeah, they realize you're serious as well. And, and just, they just get to know who you are. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, anyway, it's just a little, yeah, a little tidbit. Little tip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, that's it for this week. Uh, we're going to be back next Thursday, but uh, stay tuned Wednesday. I think we might try to do something on yeah. uh, Bell Let's Talk. Um, there's lots of conversation to be had all over that topic. Uh, and in the meantime, go out, support live music. There's lots of stuff happening in your city. Yes. All right. Talk Thanks. to you soon.